Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first ever live version of the Daily Puzzle Challenge. Today, I'm going to be solving 15 puzzles. That's bam, bam, bam. Can't do it with two hands. Sorry, otherwise I would. Um, in 15 minutes, and we're going to be providing instruction along the way. Basically, the video, uh, the video series we started on YouTube on Daily Puzzle Solving uh, was pretty popular. People liked it. It's something quick that I could do to give some awesome and free content and let people have some insight into my theories and advice on on puzzle solving but most importantly how we can use them to sort of build your calculation muscles and improve your pattern recognition and, and these sort of things that make a strong chess player so uh, the last daily puzzle I solved was on 410 April 10th and uh, so we're gonna jump right in to the April 11th puzzle I have not been looking at any of the daily puzzles over the last couple of weeks Obviously, I know that, you know, I have no reason to lie about that. Plus, it's more authentic when we solve it. And um, any questions, any comments, you can leave them in the chat. We will, uh, this video will be available on YouTube. And when we launch our V3 redesign, which is so close, ah, la, 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 like literally the light is going to come down. Um, when we want, launch our, our V3 redesign, we're going to have more than just one daily video for you every day. We're going to be giving you so much awesome content obviously, especially for the premium members, that it's, it's literally going to mind-blowing, all right? So uh, let's let's get started. Let's jump right in and uh, and get this get this party on the road. Everyone, welcome. Welcome. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do this. Sorry, I got to uh, I got to pull up my daily puzzle to solve it. All right. And just like that, we also start the timer. Look at that. Sweet timer. And yeah, we, we got this like loss style thing going on, you know, like 4, 8, 15, 16, 20, 30, 42. Like it's this old school analog, like click, click. That way it's like we can, all right, I better focus. I, I, I don't know how much time I'm going to need to solve 15 puzzles, but I only get 15 minutes. So here we go. The last puzzle I have not solved, which was 411, which looks like it was a tough puzzle. What day of the week was 411? I think it was a Saturday, which means this is, this is, this is pretty tough. Not a, not a great way to start this thing off for me. All right, so what am I considering here? I'm white. Um, clearly, black's king position is in a slightly awkward uh, situation. Like awkward for who? Like I make you laugh? Like funny? Like a clown? Like how do I how do I make you laugh? Um, he's in an awkward position. We obviously have the queen on this diagonal. If we're considering our candidate moves based on the hierarchy that I've, you know, been teaching all of you as far as checks, captures, and tempo moves. Queen takes c6 check is actually the only check in the position, which after king takes c6, we have bishop e4 check or bishop takes b5 check. King goes back to c7, and we're pretty much going to dismiss a queen sacrifice. Um, the most obvious forcing or tempo moves after that are clearly something to do with b5, especially if we're considering that opening this diagonal would make the most sense to get at the king. Um, so maybe a bishop takes b5... If rook takes b5, rook takes b5, pawn takes b5, we have queen b7 mate. So if bishop takes b5, uh, c takes b5, rook takes b5, we're threatening b7, rook takes b5, queen takes b5, it would be very difficult for him to stop us from getting in. Even a move like rook to d5 to block the queen would allow rook b7 check, which is a skewer to the king and the, and, and the queen. Um, so I don't want to rush too quickly because I'm nervous about needing all my time. But uh, but I feel pretty confident that bishop takes b5 would be the only forcing way in. And, and it's one of those positions where there's just not a lot going on strategically. You know, there aren't a lot of permanent weaknesses um, as far as, like, maybe looking for other ways to approach the position. It seems that bishop takes b5 is a pretty forcing idea. Uh, it only wins a pawn, though, if bishop takes b5 and then rook d5. I can move the bishop, though, to c4, which gains a tempo on the rook and opens up rook b7 again. So I feel pretty confident about that. Are there any other more forcing ways to get in that I'm just totally neglecting? I don't think so. d5, uh, e takes d5. We have not improved the position enough. So let's go with bishop takes b5. Okay, that feels good. Let's play rook takes b5. It's a pretty obvious follow-up. Let's take again. And, okay, after rook to b8, now the question is... Um, okay, so obviously the, the main theme that we started with, which was rook to b7, probably makes the most sense here. Um, if rook takes, queen takes, king to d8, there's no mate, at least not right away. Uh, we have 
queen to b8 check, king to d7. We can even grab another pawn and then even trade and push a7. So that looks like a forcing win. So we're going to rocket, rocket sock em robots. Okay, it's solved right there, which is kind of interesting. I don't know that I agree that the puzzle should end there. I think that after king to d8, uh, which I can't actually make the move here, it, it might have been useful for us to make this puzzle go a little farther. I don't set up these daily puzzles, so I'm allowed to criticize my staff. You know, this isn't like like me talking about myself in a third person, really narcissistic kind of way. I promise. All right. Um, but I think king to d8 and then queen b8 check, king up. We often, one of our theories in building these daily puzzles is we don't like it to continue if you get to a point where it's so winning where there's tons of obvious ways to win, like multiple, multiple solutions. And sometimes a few squeak by, like we all make mistakes, but that's kind of the theory. So often it ends in a winning position where if it doesn't have this like really fulfilling climax, you know, where you feel like you got the checkmate or you won the queen, sometimes that's the reason why is because there were just too many ways to win. Just so you know, wow, I'm already at 10 minutes. This is going to be wild. Can you guys feel it? Can you, you can cut the tension in here with a knife. You know what I'm talking about? Come on. Um, king to d8. I think just check a ruski, take a7 with check a ruski, and then trade e7, and then push the pawn. That would have been it. All right, so we are done with 411. On to 412. Here we go. Um, nice thing is that a lot of the puzzles after the Saturday one, which we're starting with a tough one, should get a little easier. Rook h8 check seems like the most obvious forcing move. King takes h8, queen to h5 check, king to g8. Queen to h7 check, king f8, and mate. That's a forced mate. That's shake and bake, and I helped. I'm like that little girl on the commercial with the with the Dutch with the oven. Um, see, here's a reason why we stopped it, an example of that, where we don't go further because after king f8, there's two checkmates and one. Queen takes g7 and queen and queen h8. Actually, there's three. There's bishop takes g7. So if you ever have a problem with the daily puzzles not ending, like I said, in the most fulfilling way, that's the reason. It's like, you know, it, it, you know, it wouldn't be... That's challenging. So that's that's two I've solved 100% correctly. We have nine minutes and 45 seconds left. Let's keep this let's keep this train trucking. Are you guys excited? Are you excited? Yeah, yeah. I know you're excited. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. No, I feel you. I can feel your excitement. Come on. Okay. Queen takes f6. King to g8. Queen to g5. Check. King to h8. Queen to h6. Check. And then queen h7. Mate. There are possibly some other good moves after queen takes f6, but this is definitely going to be the first move. I don't see any more forcing tactic at this point, besides I did just calculate a forced mate. So usually when you calculate a forced mate, you should follow through with it. Boomtown. All right, that's three. Um, again, the main theory is you're going to rock these positions consistently and pull away the most, uh, the most useful amount of information if you follow always the hierarchy of how... And it's how Hikaru has said that he used Blitz, right, to get better, which is... You know, the most forcing patterns have to be just always on the tip of your brain, you know, and, and seeing them so much is what can really build those muscles. And so it's it's like I'm always looking at the most obvious checks and I don't dismiss sacrifices. I don't dismiss any move. Strong players don't have dogmatic dismissals of moves, even if it's a sacrifice, because they just know that in every position it's like, you know, start with checks, start with the most powerful captures, and then start with the most powerful tempo moves as far as, you know, where are their sideline pieces, where are their hanging pieces. And this is, you know, an approach that... They're not always thinking of, of it out loud in this way that Danny does, where he goes step by step, but they are thinking about it subconsciously. Okay, 414. We're still 100%. I see mate and bake. I see rook takes h6, pawn takes queen f6, check, king h7, queen g6, and then queen takes h6, mate. That's what I see. That's what I see. I don't know what you see, but I see that. So take that, camel cake, in your face. All right, um... Next one, we have most forcing move, most obvious check is rook takes h7 after king takes h7. Bishop takes e8 is a discovered check. He can play king to g7. No, it's not going to be bishop takes e8. Look, rook takes h7, king takes h7. We want to take away the g8 square, so we play bishop to f7, discovered check. Then when he plays king to g7, only move, we play rook h7, sacrificing it, forcing the king back to h7, which allows us to bring the queen to h5 with tempo. King g7, queen g6, king h8, queen h6, mate. You're welcome, world. You are welcome. Boom. I don't know why I just knew it. I just, I'm feeling it right now. Can you feel it? My hand is on fire. I'm so hot. Like literally it's burning to touch my mouse right now. That's how good this feels. That's how good this feels. You know, it's just, don't judge me. All right. I'm just here to protect my daughter. All right. Ever since your mom died, I've been burying transformers in the backyard. All right. And then Tommy jumped over the back fence and then he started digging them up. All right. It's all right. I'm just, you know, and then I, you know, and then I went to MIT and I started drawing algorithms. All right. On the board. All right, and then I became like the smartest janitor in the world. Wait, 
know, that's Matt Damon, all right? Well, look, you can't expect a guy to always remember every single movie he's ever been in, let alone everything that's happened in his life, especially when you're a star like me, all right? All right, I mean, I saw the Barry and Transformers in the backyard, and then I saw the drawing algorithms on the MIT board, then I remembered that it was Matt Damon, and now I'm back to solving puzzles, all right? All right? God, all right, I've been trying to protect my daughter ever since your mom died, and then I've been, you know, I developed a degenerate gambling problem, and I started to think about all the ways I could sack my pieces, all right? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Um, I don't know what to do here. I literally have lost my focus in this position because I, uh, I only have... Six minutes and 15 seconds. I have to be very careful right now. Um, hmm. I'm nervous. Truly, I don't see the answer to this one. I'd like to take on C7. But then he mates me. I'd like to take on F8. But then he takes H2 with mate. I'd like to sack my queen for some kind of checkmate. Um, I'd like to somehow find a way to draw, all right? That's what I want, all right? I'm just trying to draw here, all right? Um, it does say white to play and draw, right? I really don't know the answer. This is a real tough one. Queen takes h6 check, king takes h6. Tempo moves are not putting me on the right track here. I have to find some way to deal with the double threat of mate. I'd like to play queen e4 check, but the knight guards it. it doesn't. I mean, there's no chance of stalemate here, because I have too many moves to make. I have pawns and knights. So I have to find something more creative when it comes to drawing this position that is not a stalemate. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. That's, that's for Sheezy. Oh, what if I play something like queen to g8 check? Because if rook takes, I can take the queen. And if king takes, I can take with check. That has to be it. Oh, yeah. Okay, but now what? Now that he moves the king to g6, I have several things to consider. I can just go back to e6 with check. That seems like the, the, the thing that you would play like in a blitz game, right? The first instinct you would have. Um, And I think he has to go back, right? Because if he blocks, I win the queen. Yeah, I think that's it. I think he has to go back because, look, he can't come up to the fifth rank. And if he blocks with the rook, I can trade with check and win the queen. So just like that, I found a transformer. All right, I found a transformer. All right, 417, all right? All right, this is tricky. Uh, we have back rank mates going on here. Um, we have knight to g5 to consider. There's no clear check. Queen, rook e8 check, rook takes, rook takes. I got nothing. Knight to g5 feels pretty good, Hollywood. It feels like knight f7 check is not going to be easy to deal with. Um, if he moves the knight to f8, I have knight f7 check. If he if he does anything, I'm still bringing in the uh, the funk the funk, right? I'm uptown funking you up right now. Yeah, that's that's definitely some some funky town. Check 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 and mate. No, that doesn't work. Um, check f7, king g8, double check. King moves to h8. Sacking the queen does not work because his queen guards f7. Pro tip. Don't just go sacking queens just because. This is actually really hard. This is a lot harder than I thought <laughs> to solve. I thought I was going to just breeze through it, to be totally honest with you. Um, all right. I'm, I'm not going to do it. All right. Knight f7 check. King to g8. Knight h6 check. King to h8. Is that what I'm doing? Am I just taking a draw? Ugh. Bishop takes f8, he takes here. I don't see anything better than, than this forceful way to check. I mean, I can I can take here, but then he wins my queen. Like, what is the forceful way to draw here? I mean, to win. I don't think I have anything. Oh, I, incorrect. All right, well, I got my first one wrong, right? So what what is the win here that I'm just missing? I think, I think we have to see the solution once I get it wrong because I don't have enough time. So it's queen to f7? Whoa, I would not have found that in the next 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Queen to f4, and then bishop to c1. Holy shenanigans. I don't know if I would have found... Queen to f7 is such a subtle idea. To hit to hit the queen and to threaten bishop takes f8, that is genius. Because if he takes, you take with the knight, and then you win the rook on d8. I don't know if I was good. That was, that was hard, Town. Um, 
Okay, also looks tough. Rook takes h7, king takes h7 is, is the first thing I'm considering. Also, knight to g5 check. I like the idea of taking h7 and then playing knight g5 check. And then playing the rook over. I like it a lot. Wait, do I have to give check first? Okay, this is very important. But you have to be very careful. If I play knight check here, he might be able to sack the queen. So that could be a real problem. If I play rook check... Um, I think it's rook check. Yeah, because if he blocks, then I have knight g5 check. That's the key. Definitely. And now when he goes back, now I have rook takes check. And then I move this knight with double check. Or not double check, discover check. And I assume it has to be knight to f5. Right? Yeah, looks good. I would love to mate him with the queen. But I don't see any way to do that. I guess I should just take the queen then. Ugh, this is, oh my gosh, this is so hard. I, I would love to mate him with the queen. I think this is the answer. Oh no, what is it? What's the solution? Whoa, bishop takes g7, queen takes, knight takes, and then queen d4 check and you win the bishop. Oh my gosh. Oh my, I only have 30 seconds. This is, this is craziness. This is mate in three. I see this one right away. Boom, boom. Boom. Next puzzle, 420. Okay, this one is also a mate in three. Seems pretty simple, but is it? I don't even see the answer right now. What is the answer? Uh, what is the answer? I don't know the answer. Ah! I don't know the answer. This is super tough. All right, rook check. King. I mean, I, I, this is an easily winning one, but I'm just like freaking out right now on time. I think I'm running out of time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. All right, well, let's let's try to solve the rest just because. Um, what is the answer to this one here? Seems like it should be kind of easy, right? There's a million and a half ways to discover check. Um, I just don't see the uh, I don't see the immediate answer to this one. Wow, wow, this was tough. This was so tough. I have got to focus. I wasted so much time in the beginning, like giving you guys advice and talking about I don't know. And then I went on a mock wall book tangent. All right, I just you know I talked about finding transformers in my backyard. Um, no, but seriously, I lost it, and and then with it, I lost my confidence. You know, which is the worst thing to lose. Never lose heart. Never lose confidence. Pro tip. Wow. Well, we've learned something today about ourselves, which is that this is this is going to be very hard. One minute per puzzle. Now I have a challenge. And the next time we do this show, I'm going to bring it in for the real thing. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to solve the rest of them here. I don't even see the answer to this one, though, only because I see it says mate in three. I don't really like this kind of puzzle, just personally between us, because knight takes c7 check and then winning the queen is like, that's what I would do in a game. I don't care if it's mate in three because it's mate in five. So it's kind of against the way grandmasters like think about chess. It's like, I just don't want to struggle over this position. It doesn't mean it's not useful to push yourself to find the most accurate approaches to things, but just not your favorite cup of tea to do to work on that for me. And I think most... Uh, professional players feel that way um so with that said i mean wh where is a mate in three here i mean rookie seven check king there i don't see, if i take anywhere else with the he's going to take my queen and i, I didn't see the follow-up to mate rook f8 check forces king takes but what's the point of that oh and then rook f1 that's the idea i wasn't even looking full board so that was just my own mistake i was considering all the double checks that i needed to but okay, so there's that one. I'm going to keep pushing myself. Takes and then F7 check is going to be made. Okay? If I had just gotten past that one, I would have won. Maybe. That one, that one, no. I only had nine seconds. Who am I kidding? Um, okay, well, now I have several things to do here. Check, moves, chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Oh, it's knight check there. The key of knight check there is that you block the queen's communication of the d8 square, and then you get a queen. So that's the idea. And then you take f8 mate. 
All right, we're getting down to the wire here. Now we have yesterday's puzzle. Um, kind of strange town, Dr. Strangelove. Kind of strange town here. It's, it's definitely going to be the first move is not a check. How much you want to bet? Because when you look at puzzles like this, with the king in the middle of the board, this is this is more like a a, a, a uh, not a made up. What's it called? A uh, like a a, pu a puzzle, but it's a composed position. Sorry, it's it's a composition. Um, and when you look at compositions like this, you just know that the first move is going to be a passive one because um, there's no check for the opponent. See, there's no there's no check, and so you know that you can get away with a passive move. That's the first pro tip. And then the second thing is that any check that you currently do, if it doesn't immediately improve the position, then you just know that it was probably not right. I mean, like, okay, queen e5 check. If the king goes to c6, there's no mate in one. Bishop a4, he goes there. Bishop f3, he goes to d7. Um, so I think the first move must be something that improves the position, like, like bishop a4, which threatens queen c6 mate. And then the only thing I need to make sure I have is if he plays rook to c8, is there a mate in one? I don't see it. Okay, maybe it's bishop f3, because that threatens queen c6 mate and queen to d5 mate, and I don't think he can stop both. And if he plays bishop e4, I have knight take, so I think that's it. Yep, I was right. And knight takes e4 mate. All right, so that's that one. And then finally, the puzzle of today, which is a Friday, Friday, got to get down on Friday. Um... It's Friday, Friday, we're gonna get down on Friday, T-G-I-F, uh, T-G-I-F, uh, Friday, I think it's bishop takes h6, pawn takes queen f6 check, king h7, and then bishop to d3 wins the queen. That's my first instinct, but he would have three pieces for the queen, so that probably is not good enough. Um, what else do we have here? Ooh, bishop to g5 is a shenanigan. If he takes it, we have queen to h5 check, queen h7, and then queen takes e8 mate. But what does bishop g5 do that's worth our time? Nothing. That's the problem. Um, so, right, what do we got going here? It's like a... It's like tangle web of, like, moves you have to consider, and it's like, oh, right, I don't know quite what to play here. Oh, I think I see it. Check this out. Bishop takes h6, pawn takes rook to e1... If queen takes, then queen f6 check, king moves, and then bishop d3 check? And if queen e4, then... No, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, focus. Um, bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, rook a to e1. He also has bishop takes h2 check in that position, which you always have to consider those crazy computer sacrifices, right? Just because you know that it's a puzzle, you have that advantage. Those are things that you wouldn't really consider in a game. Totally. Um, hmm. Bishop takes h6. I mean, it's a move I'm looking at because, again, the most forcing checks don't seem to do anything. There's no way to skewer the rook and queen. You know, we would lose. Bishop g5, again, feels good, but even bishop e6. And what's my next move? I'd have to just take. Rook takes, and, and what do I got? Bishop takes, rook takes, right? So bishop g5 is a nice idea for me to be aware of this queen and bishop uh, net around the king. It's... um. There's a name for that mating net. I forget what it's called. But but bishop h6 seems like the most forcing move. And after pawn takes, I'm pretty sure I'm winning after rook e1. Queen takes e1. Queen f6 check. King h7. Bishop d3 check. King to g8. And then what? I don't I don't see it. Frustrated. I don't see the win. I mean, I see queen g6 check, king f8. I don't see the follow-up. What am I? What am I not considering about this position? Open the brain, and are there other moves to consider here? Bishop takes h6, g takes h6. The other irritating thing is I'm currently down a piece, aren't I? Which is something you should always do when you're first starting up for a puzzle. Is um is uh, take, a, take a moment to sort of evaluate what's going on in the position, you know, as far as uh, material goes. It's just like taking stock of whose king is weaker, what are the permanent weaknesses, what pieces are out of play. 
you know, a lot of times title player, like I, I do that very fast on the easy ones. You see, I'm able to solve them like within like three seconds, right? As soon as I look at the position, I solve it because I'm aware of the patterns. But in positions where the pattern isn't as familiar, it's really important to take stock and make sure you're aware of what you're playing for. I mean, here I'm down a piece. So the king being weak is is even more critical. You know, there isn't um, there isn't really another option as far as uh, candidate moves go if I don't come up with something sort of forcing um, it also makes moves like bishop takes h2 better for black because they can afford to get back a piece. An idea I'm now considering that I really wasn't considering before is the move bishop to d3 immediately. If bishop d3 immediately and the queen goes anywhere but back, I win the rook, like queen h4 or something. So if the queen goes back, do I have something like queen g6? I'm threatening mate. He plays king to g8, and then I have moves like bishop takes h6. I mean, it's definitely like a way to continue the attack. I think white might be winning there. Um, the other thing to consider is that after bishop takes h6, g takes a6, bishop to d3 is now a skewer of mate. But again, they can play queen e7, and I don't see the follow-up. So if bishop takes h6, g takes h6, queen f6 check, king to h7. Oh, what if I just play bishop d3? And if he takes it, I give check and take the rook with check. That has to be it. I think I just made this problem a lot harder than it actually was. Yeah. Classic Danny. Yeah. Pew. I do that sometimes. Sometimes I'm like overthinking it. I think in trying to give you guys a little insight into the, the crazy world that is this noggin, right? Not just a hat holder. Um, I just totally missed the obvious, and I'd already considered this idea in other lines, which is that if I move the queen off of the e-file, I'd have this ability to give check and pick up the rook with check. So the reason why this is winning, and I, I originally dismissed it quickly because I thought he could take here, and after takes, he would just have three pieces for the queen. And I was assuming there would be something better, but I just totally forgot that if he takes here, I have an intermezzo. I play queen f7 check, king h8, take the rook with check, king moves, and then take the queen, and of course... White has more than enough material. So how long did that actually take me? I think that took me almost a half an hour. Holy shenanigans. Okay, first of all, I apologize for, for not bringing my A game. To, I apologize to all of you. Second of all, the fact that this is, that, that this is harder than I thought it was going to be, especially talking out loud. And I guess I should have considered that even in easy daily puzzle days, the videos I've done were still like four or five minutes, right? Three or four minutes. So giving myself one minute per puzzle, this is going to be a challenge. I think when we launch V3, I'll do it like every week. I'll do seven minutes for seven puzzles, you know, and we'll make it like a featured video um, along with other featured videos. Like I said, we're going to be giving you guys so much content. You're going to be like begging to give us more money. you are like, Danny, I want to give you more money because you are making your website so much better. And I'll be like, I love you. And you'll be like, I know. And I'll be like, well, we all love each other and that's great. And you'll be like, oh my God, can we just hug it out please virtually? And I'll say yes. And then we'll just hug it out. That'll be it. All right, guys, seriously. Um, that was real. I feel good about it. You feel good about it. We all feel good about what just happened, except for the fact that I totally failed. Setting them up for failure. Is that, oh my gosh, is that not ironic? Because you guys just set me up for failure. It's almost like this whole thing was meant to be when Jack realizes that Desmond has been putting the numbers in, but really John Locke is the smoke monster. And if you haven't finished Lost yet, I'm so sorry that I just gave you the biggest spoiler. Whoa. Um, anyway, I do feel set up for failure. I feel like I didn't know what I was getting into, but I love that we all learned something about ourselves. I love that we've grown closer, and I love all of you. Good night and good luck.